Hello, I'm Past Paper Guy. Um, I'm going to be solving this AQA AS physics paper, specimen paper 2014 for you. Um, it's the only AS material that is on public release just at the moment, but as soon as the 2016 paper becomes available to the public, I will include, I will put a video up of the solution to that one as well. Right, so technique, first of all. If you haven't already solved this paper, then I strongly recommend, before watching this video, that you go to the link that I've included below in the description, download the paper, print it off, and give it a go. Only once you've given it a go, have a look at this video, and you'll learn a lot more from that. So this is the paper I'm going to solve. Um, we're going to move on to question one then. Right, so this is question one. This is a relatively easy book learning question to get you into it. So we start off 1.1, complete the table. So this is stuff that we should just know. So we should know the relative charge, pi on is plus one, or pi on plus is plus one. The relative charge in a proton is plus one. You need to know that. The baryon number, anything which is a baryon has a baryon number of one, anything which isn't a baryon has a baryon number of zero. So a pion is a meson, it's not a baryon, so it has a baryon number of zero. The proton is a baryon, it has a num baryon number of one. Mesons, remember, are made up of one quark and one antiquark. Protons, oh sorry, baryons are made up of three quarks. An antibaryon is made up of three antiquarks. Quark composition. Again, you should know this, but we can work it out if we don't actually remember it. So, first of all, the proton. We need to pick three of these ups and downs, which are going to give us a charge of plus one and a baryon number of plus one. That's why we need three of them. So if we pick up, up, and down, then we get plus two thirds, plus two thirds, minus one third gives us um, four thirds minus a third gives us one. So an up, up, down combination will give us a proton. And for the meson, the pi on plus, we need one quark and one antiquark, and we need to get it so that they're Baryon number is zero and the charge is plus one from there. So again, we're going to be using ups and downs. So the charge, we need to get up to one. So we definitely want to pick that one. And if we pick an anti-down, then we'll get minus, minus a third charge on this one. So that will give us one. So even if you didn't actually remember the quark composition of a pi on plus, which you probably should do, um, you can work it out in the exam if you don't know. Okay, so there we go. Question one, part two. When a positive pion interacts with a proton, a kaon, which is another meson, can be produced along with another strange particle shown in this equation. So it's already told us that k, um, k is strange and that um, x is strange. Circle the type of interaction shown in this equation. So this is an interaction between two particles made entirely of quarks, so you should know that this is a strong nuclear reaction, like that. Deduce the relative charge, baryon number, and strangeness of particle x. Right, this is a strong interaction, which means that all of these values must be conserved. Charge is always conserved, baryon number is always conserved, and strangeness is always conserved in strong nuclear reactions. It's only ever not conserved in the weak nuclear reaction. So we know that all three of these must be conserved. So let's do charge to start with. So we write charge. So the charge on the pion is plus one. The charge on the proton is plus one. That goes to the charge on the kaon is plus one. And so we need something there to balance this. So the charge of x, it must be plus one, plus one, plus one something, that must be plus one to balance. Next is the baryon number. Right, the 
The baryon number of the pion was zero. The baryon number of the proton was one. That goes to the baryon number of this kaon here. We need to know that a kaon is a meson, so it has a baryon number of nothing. Plus, to make this balance, therefore, we need a one here. So the baryon number, baryon number of x is plus one. So that means that x must be a baryon. The next one of these is strangeness there. So the strangeness of the pion is zero because it does not contain any strange quarks. The strangeness of the proton is zero because it does not contain any strange quarks. Right, now you should know what the strangeness of the kaon is. And the strangeness of a kaon, um, a positive kaon, is plus one. And the x particle there, therefore, must have a strangeness of minus one in order for it to balance. So x has a strangeness of minus one. How could we work that out if we couldn't remember that the kaon had a strangeness of plus one? Well, there is a way. The x particle we've already concluded, must be a baryon, because it's got a baryon number of plus one, not an antibaryon. That means it's made up of quarks, not antiquarks. So therefore, the quark composition of this X particle can only include strange quarks, which have a strangeness of minus one. It can't include any um, anti-strange quarks, which, have a, which would have a strangeness of plus one. So it's got to be negative. And then we know that the K on can only have two quarks in it, one quark and one antiquark. So if it's got a strange if it's got a value of strangeness, it can't have a strange quark and an anti-strange quark, because that wouldn't make a, a positive value there and it wouldn't give you any strangeness overall, because you're getting a minus one and a plus one, they'd cancel each other out. So it's got to have only one quark which has a strangeness. And if that one's going to be negative, that one's got to be positive, so that's going to have an anti-strange particle in it. So that one, the kaon, would actually be up and anti-strange. So it's a little bit convoluted, but you can work it out in the middle of an exam. I wouldn't advise it. I would advise for you to just learn all of your meson types. I think there's a table in the main textbook um, which has them all in. Question 1.4. Particle x can decay to produce a neutron and a positive pion, as shown in this equation. Circle the type of interaction shown in this equation. Well, this one, you just need to remember your rules. If we look here, this particle is strange, and neither of these two have a strangeness. So therefore, strangeness has not been conserved. There's only one type of interaction where strangeness is not conserved, and that's the weak nuclear interaction. So explain your answer. We just need to write down what I've just said. So x has non-zero strangeness. So x has non-zero strangeness. The neutron and the pion plus both have zero strangeness. Just move that out of the way. So strangeness is not conserved, therefore it must be weak interaction, or the weak nuclear force. Okay, strangeness has not been conserved, therefore it must be the weak nuclear force. All of the others, strangeness would be conserved. The neutron and the positive pion then decay. The positive pion decays into a positron and an electron neutrino. Write down the equation for the decay of a neutron again. Well, a neutron, you should know, decays into a proton. A proton is the only stable baryon. But the neutron is neutrally charged. The proton is positively charged. So we need a negative charge in order to balance this side of the equation. So for the negative charge, we, we have an electron. But you can't make an electron on its own, because the electron is a lepton, and they can only be generated in pairs. So if we have a lepton, that's got a lepton number of plus one, 
we must also have another lepton with a lepton number of minus one to cancel it. So we need an anti-lepton, it's the anti-electron neutrino, and that goes there. Again, it's something that you should actually just know off by heart, but um, you could work it out in the middle of an exam. Explain why no further decay occurs. Um, no further decay occurs because all of the products here, the electron, the electron, the anti-electron neutrino, and the proton, all of these are stable. So the proton is a stable baryon. In fact, the proton is the only stable baryon, so we might write that down. So the proton is the only stable baryon, and we also know that electrons and neutrinos are also stable. So they do not decay. Right, and there we have the solution to question one.